Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Crockett, Texas. It is a joy for me to be here. Just got back from annual conference and I'm delighted to share with you that I've been reappointed to this church for another year. Serve this community and church. I'm so happy to be here. Y'all are a great church to serve. We love being here. I want you to know we love being here. We are very blessed to have a great crowd here today. It's going to be a special day of worship when we confirm three young people have been working very hard to learn all about the Christian faith and what it means to have Jesus as Lord and Savior. We'll be saving that for a little later in the service. So right now what I'd like to encourage you to do if you haven't already is sign, register your attendance today and uh, let us know you're present. If you're watching online, please uh, let us know also by signing in that way. I'm excited to share the Vacation Bible School is right around the corner. It begins Monday, June 13th, and lasts through Friday, June 17th. Each day we're going to be focusing on scriptures, recreation, music, crafts, and science. We'll be serving a light meal for the kids, too. Friday's focus is going to be on a lot of outdoor water fun and recreation. It will also feature a meal. Hope you'll make plans to join us. I think I see Chrissy Bell back there, the director of EBS. Wave your hand, will you, Chrissy? If you would like, thank you very much, Chrissy. Give her a hand. She's done a lot of hard work to, to, to direct Vacation Bible School. Had a great one last year. I know it's going to be even better this year. But if you'd like to volunteer for VBS and haven't told her about it yet, please see her after the service. I bet you can fit them in, can't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you know any children down the block that uh, you think would really enjoy VBS, that includes everybody, actually. So uh, invite them to come. We have, uh, we have um, sign-up sheets out here in the lobby for, for children, and we'd love to invite the whole community of children to our VBS. There will be a meeting this afternoon, what, at 1.15? Christy, uh, for our uh, volunteers today? Yes, today around 1.15, right after our uh, reception. In what building? Fellowship Hall. Fellowship Hall? Yes. Very good. Okay, thank you so very much. You heard it from Christy. I hope to see more of you over there. As I mentioned earlier, today we'll be confirming three young persons into full membership. And yes, there will be a reception right after this service in the Fellowship Hall. So um, we hope you'll come for the punch and the cake and come and share in the celebration. That concludes my announcements. I know there's some others on the back of the bulletin you'll want to be mindful of. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and join together in our call to worship as printed in your bulletin. God of wind and fire, when you send your spirit, we are created anew. God of mighty oceans and still waters, when we receive your baptism, we are born anew. God of bread and wine, when we eat at your table, we are nourished anew. So pour out your spirit, let sacred waters flow. Fill us with holy food. May our hearts and hands be open wide to receive your gifts of love. Amen. Amen. Now let's sing and sing for this very joy-filled hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 89, verses 1, 2, and 4.
be seated. Let us join together in a service of word and table. As you see on page 12, we'll join together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard a cry of need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. This brings us to a time of prayer as a congregation. And I know that there are prayer requests in your bulletin. I do hope that you'll keep lifting those needs up. And I invite you to join me now as we enter into an attitude of prayer. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we come this morning in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. For indeed he is the only one we may come with and be able to approach your throne. So we come with thankful hearts knowing that through your Son we can speak directly with you. We thank you, Lord, for this gift. And we come today respectfully asking you, as we have set ourselves apart for this day, we ask you to teach us, to shape us, to mold us more into a holy people that reflects your divine image. Lord, we ask that you would open our hearts and minds to hearing your voice more clearly that we may be sensitive to your words. Help us to be less concerned about temporal things and the ways of this world, the threats and the fears that are all around us, and to be more focused on seeking your kingdom and righteousness. Oh God, purify our hearts and change us so we may more passionately and appropriately reflect the image of Jesus. And Father, on this day, we, we cry out to you for understanding and love between people. There is much animosity and conflict in our world today. Help your church grow into its calling as instruments of your peace. And Lord God, there are so many hurting and struggling among our church family and friends, and even in this room, we remember those who have lost loved ones and ask that your consoling presence will bring comfort and peace to their families. We remember those who are recuperating from surgery and other physical ailments. We ask that you would use each one of us to bring healing and encouragement to their lives. Help us, Father, learn how to be instruments of your compassion and love. And Father, we ask that you would fill us with a holy passion for your truth so we might be more obedient to the instructions you have given us in your word. And so that <laughs> others cannot help but be attracted to your light living inside us. Oh God, we know you have laid an important mission before us. And we ask that you'd help us to never lose focus and a vision of reaching out to the lost and the least and the brokenhearted. Oh God, we owe you everything in our lives because your son's blood has redeemed our future. You've saved us from eternal condemnation. And so in this moment of worship, we devote ourselves to you and our gifts and our service. Whatever praise or gratitude we are capable of offering, we place them before you because you are worthy of all of our praise. 
Use our lives to bring you all the praise we possibly can offer. And all these things we lift up to you, along with those concerns unshared but present in our hearts. We lift them to you in the name of Christ, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, I'd like to invite our usher to come forward so we may present to God his tithes and our gifts.
remain standing for our next hymn, Spirit of the Living God, number 393 in your hymnal. We'll sing it through twice. seated.
please stand as you are able for the reading of today's scripture, which comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one according in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rush mighty, rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them dividing tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit came them utterance, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you please be seated? And may I invite you to join me in a word of prayer? O oh God, our Heavenly Father, it is my prayer that you'll hide me behind the cross of Jesus Christ and use the words that come out of my mouth and meditations moving within our hearts to bring you glory in the building of the kingdom of God. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today is Pentecost, and it would be appropriate for me to say, Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday. It's the first, it's a day when the first 3,000 converts were born again, coming into the church nearly 2,000 years ago, 1990 approximately years ago. And you will remember that it takes place in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, it was no coincidence that our Lord planned Pentecost to, occur on the, to happen on the same day yep. as the Jewish festival Shavuot. Because you see, this festival brought a lot of people to Jerusalem as mm -hmm. Jews were required to make the pilgrimage during all of their festivals. Yep. So, the harvest was going to be plentiful for the Lord, and he knew it. Mm -hmm. As tens of thousands of Jews from all over the world filled the streets celebrating the annual festival of Shavuot. It's the day known by Jews when Moses and the children of Israel received the Ten Commandments on stone. Those tablets of stone were God's way of providing his people with instructions and guidance for living. Mm -hmm. So Jews have celebrated this annual feast day making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem ever since. It was that day, just 10 days after Jesus' ascension, that his followers were waiting on the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus had instructed them. He had taught them to wait for him in Jerusalem. And so there they were praying together, seeking the face of God. And something very incredible happened that day, changing the way we perceive those laws and commandments that God gave the Jews on Shavuot to Moses. Let me explain. The prophets Ezekiel and Jeremiah foretold, foretold of the day when those laws would no longer simply be written on stone tablets. Let me share what Ezekiel tells you. From the prophet Ezekiel, we read, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And then again, in the book of Jeremiah, we read how God reaffirms his plan. The prophet writes, I will put my law in their minds and write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So he's not changing the law. He's moving the law from their heads to their hearts. And those prophecies came true as the Holy Spirit descended on the apostles and thousands more, writing his law on their hearts. These prophecies make it clear that our belief in Jesus Christ must make the journey from our heads to our hearts if we're truly to be in relationship with God. Only then do those laws become more than just a list of do's and don'ts. They become the first and foremost desires of faithful men and women whose souls are deeply convicted by their love for Jesus Christ. And if you read the entire chapter of today's passage, you'll see how the Spirit of God took their faithful allegiance. 
how the fire of the Holy Spirit refined their hearts and changed their desires and transformed fear-filled followers into bold, passionate apostles. Luke, the writer of Acts, tries to describe this day by saying that it was as if a violent wind had swept through the room and there was fire shaped itself into tongues resting on the apostles' heads. And suddenly they began to speak in the languages of all of those Jewish pilgrimages who had come from all over the world. Well, the crowd was absolutely stunned and amazed and began to gather around closer. They wanted to hear what these disciples were saying. And then, then Simon Peter, he stood up to preach. And he said, God has given us the Holy Spirit. It was an incredible day in Jerusalem as God formed his people into the church by sending the Holy Spirit to fill and transform their souls. And the wind blew and the fire burned and the church was birthed. And so here we are nearly 2,000 years later, still trying to understand just what happened and what it means for you and I. But one thing we, the church, have learned about the Spirit's coming and going. The Holy Spirit responds in powerful ways when the people of God are passionate and hungry for the Lord. When we are willing to bend our knee, repent of our sins, give Him our whole lives, and love one another. As Luke tells us in Acts 1, that's what the disciples were doing when the Spirit came crashing into their lives. Luke tells us how the followers of Jesus came together and were in one accord. Not talking about a Honda here. Okay. <laughs> they were in agreement. Okay, This means they had gotten past all the old accusations against each other about denying or abandoning or doubting Christ about who was first in the kingdom of God, they had humbled themselves before God and each other and were praying together. That was the setting when God's spirit broke into their midst. Rebirth, resurrection, and empowering grace flooded into their souls and their lives were never going to be the same. And that's Pentecost. And to be honest with you, Every Sunday I get up into this pulpit to preach. The prayer on my heart is that someone will experience that. I submit to you today that if we're going to be the kind of church that God desires us to be, then we've got to be a Holy Spirit-led church. Yes. And this requires us to humbly and willingly and repentantly invite the Holy Spirit to reveal those places deep within our hearts where cleansing needs to take place. John Wesley refers to this ongoing process as sanctification. And it needs to take place over the entire course of our lives. The Holy Spirit does not want to move into a dump. He wants to move into a soul that has been consecrated for him, set apart for him. John Wesley wanted us to understand God's expectations to take our repentance seriously. This is also what the Apostle Peter writes about in 1 Peter 1. He says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it's written, be holy because I am holy. Yes. That's why he also writes in 1 Peter 2. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That's 1 Peter 2, 1 to 5. Scriptures are saying we need to grow up in our salvation. After all, what is to prevent Christians from just getting absorbed again into the worldly values so that six months later you can't tell any different that we're any different from the world? 
Acts 2.42 shows us that those disciples in the early church were cautious to avoid slipping back into the ways of the world. They were seeking God. Acts 2 tells us they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. And we know the results. We're told that awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a church like that? Those early followers realized that nurturing their relationship and communion with the Lord was the only chance they had of fighting daily temptations. And they knew that maintaining a cleansed heart was an open invitation for the Holy Spirit to freely and powerfully move through them. And it was precisely because of their love for God and heartfelt desire to follow his commandments that they became a spirit-filled movement that literally changed the world. And friends, the promises from God's word are just as true today. Listen to Deuteronomy 4. Seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you search for him with all your heart and all your soul. That sounds a whole, like, a whole lot like what Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. And my friends, today we do celebrate the birthday of the church. And it is so fitting that we are blessed with these three confirmants who are ready to make their commitment to seek and love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. It's a day of celebration. Yes. So I invite you now to pick up your hymnals. Turn to page 33 with me. And we will begin the covenant of confirmation. Brothers and sisters in Christ in the sacrament of baptism, we're initiated in Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth to water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared on our baptism. Acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present Cody Hill McDougall for baptism and confirmation. I present Jenna Lee Shupak for confirmation. These three individuals that did the sponsoring and mentoring and were present almost every Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. with these young people offering their input, their thoughts about faith as they experienced it. And they are here today to confirm with you that these three young people are worthy of being before you this morning. So I invite you to turn to page 34 as I ask these important questions that are historically the questions that have been asked young confirmands for several thousand years. Think carefully now, Ethan, Cody, and Jenna, mm -hmm. before you answer. And when you do answer, I want them to hear you. Amen. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. 
Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And according to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve and serve as Christ's representative in the world? I will. And I now address the congregation. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Yeah. And will you nurture one another? in the Christian faith and life and include these persons who help now before you in your care. With God's, God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. Christ. We, will we will surround, surround these, persons these persons with a community of love, love and forgiveness and that they may grow in their trust of God and be found God faithful in their, their service to others. others. We will we pray, pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. If you'll please turn and face the altar and kneel. top of page 36 let us pray the Lord be with you and also with you eternal father when nothing existed but chaos you swept across the dark water that brought forth light in the days of Noah you saved those on the ark through water after the flood you set in the clouds a rainbow when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt you led them to freedom to the sea their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise, praise to you, Jesus, eternal, eternal Father, Father, through your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Ethan Scott Adams, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Amen. Ethan Scott Adams, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Holy Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Cody Hill McDougall, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that have been born through water and the Spirit. You may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jenna Lee Shupak, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Amen. And Jenna Lee, the Holy Spirit work within you. That have been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its minister, ministries in your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Please face the congregation. Members of the household of God, I commend to you, these persons, to your loving care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks to all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministry of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, to you who believe, it is precious. You are a chosen generation. You, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So, to remind you that you are a living stone with Christ, I invite you to take one of these stones to remind you of your place as a part of the spiritual house that is being built up as the kingdom of God. And we also have some special skulls, personalized skulls for each one of you that were made.
let them remind you. Has your name on it? Today's date. Let them remind you of your commission as a member of Christ's church. You are called to serve, just like everybody out here. Mm -hmm. You're part of the royal priesthood now. Yes. Each one of you. And the Lord invites you. No, he expects you. Yes. To live like that. Thank you, Russ. As a precious member of his holy church. And serve him. He did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of boldness to speak for him and reflect him in wisdom, in truth, and in love. I present to you the 2022 confirmation class. We will take up under the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In a moment, you'll be invited forward row by row by our ushers.
The choir will come first when that time comes, receiving the elements of Christ's body from me and then going to the chancel rail to receive the symbol of Christ's blood. If you would like to receive communion from your pew, just let one of the ushers know and they will come and serve you there. When we break the bread and partake of it, Christ tells us that we are partaking in his body. And when we drink from the cup, the Lord assures us that we are drinking from the cup of redemption, reflecting our redemption from all of our sins.
Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the most precious gift of all. We give you thanks for your kindness, your grace, your compassion, your everlasting faithfulness. May we go forward from this place in a few moments reflecting that image of who you are, that we belong to the, your royal priesthood, that we are part of a spiritual house. Never let us forget, Lord God, our identity in Christ when we go forth from this place. And let others see us and see you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We close our service of worship with an invitation to anyone who would like to unite with this church and in the way we receive new members. We'll be standing together and singing hymn number 362, Nothing But the Blood. And if you would like to unite with our church, we love nothing more than for you to come be a part of our church family. Hymn number 362. I invite all of you again to join us over in the Fellowship Hall for a special reception honoring our newest members. Yes. We're so proud of you guys, and we look forward to personally congratulating you. Now I offer all of you this benediction. <laughs> and that may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Come this way.